for a little while because we've been so super busy. So obviously the first one that we've done was when it was all still in the house and since then quite a lot has happened. So I'm going to have quite a lot to talk you around. So as you can see all of the stripping out has happened and, and then some basically. Um, this was the lounge, if you remember which we've divided into two bedrooms with two en suites, which is obviously what this is. So we've got the stud work up here, and we've got showers, basins, toilets going in here. Because there wasn't any plumbing over this side of the house, I'll take you outside in a minute, but we've had to put in diff extra manholes and, and drainage to be able to carry all the waste from these en suites out. So yeah, you can see all the, all the pipe work and things. Um, so yeah, so these are two bedrooms down here. If I take you outside now, you can actually uh, explain some of the drainage. So we have drain lines coming from over here. We've had to put in a here. And you can also see... So when we go around the other side, you'll be able to see there's manhole there, manhole behind that fin fence and another one in the corner. So it all runs. I think it's running. I can't remember where the, the street ones are. Oh, uh, yeah, there. I can't see actually. I think it goes up there. So yeah, so they're all coming sort of like this and joining mm. into one, but we've had to put these new ones in. So, we'll then take you back inside. So here before was a downstairs toilet, which we didn't really know what to do about, bearing in mind there's gonna be six bathrooms in this property. It was kind of a bit surplus, really. Um, so I actually was you know, wondering what on earth I do about it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I was talking to my mum, and she came up with a really good idea, which was to block this off, and actually in, in, make a new entrance in through the kitchen. So I'll explain what that is in a minute. But in the hallway, obviously, not much else has gone on, but we blocked up what was the the entrance to the kitchen before and kept this entrance. So now you come into the kitchen through here. We took down this wall and we've had to put a steel in. Um, so this will become the lounge kitchen diner. So here will be sofa and TV. And in like some of our other properties that we've done, if you've followed any of our other work, um, there'll be like a kind of like a breakfast bar bit here and this will be the seating dining area so it means that you have the, the bar stools or whatever here um, table dining bar breakfast bar kind of thing sofa TV so you can watch TV whilst you're eating and then all of this will become the kitchen for six and possibly eight bedrooms if Basically, we're doing. We're hoping to have a development on the side, and if it doesn't turn into a development, we'll make two extra bedrooms. And so this kitchen will cater for eight people, in the event that we might need it to cater for eight people. If that makes sense. So obviously, there where I said we blocked up the entrance into the kitchen means that we just get all of this space now for ovens or fridge freezers or all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so basically that's. That's why we've blocked that up. And then here is what I said about I'm this. I'm just showing a steel from this side. And so over here is what I was saying about. So this was the downstairs toilet and it was really long and narrow. And so we couldn't really do much with it. But my mum of all people came up with a really good idea to knock through from here. And what's gonna be down that end is gonna be all the, the water tank, the boiler, all this stuff that's kind of bulky. We need to put somewhere but um, and it needs to be accessible, but there's often you sort of don't want to lose valuable space to put it. So we've put that there. And then in this side, we're going to be putting the washing machine and tumble dryer so that it's kind of away from the kitchen. So it's, you know, obviously the washing machine is one thing that people complain about that it's noisy. So it's really far away from the downstairs bedrooms or anything. And it, it's in a different room to everywhere. So yeah, hopefully it'll be set away and this will be the kind of utility area um, and then the last thing to sort of say in here is again because of what we're hoping to do next door we are moving along with the with the thinking that we're not going to be able to have that wall so everything on that side of the property is being blocked up so obviously there was a window there and a door there which provided light into this room now I hope you can sort of see there is quite a lot of 
natural light in here anyway, just from opening that up, keeping that window. And what we're gonna do as well, because of obviously knocking through this, and obviously there's no windows in this room here, but there is the window in the utility room, we're gonna put a, a fully glass internal door here so that some of that light still comes into here rather than blocking it off. Um, so that's how we're trying to keep as much natural light in this room as possible. Um, but yeah, I, think, I hope you agree, is even though there's only one small window on this side, it's still okay because you've got such large glass a gla know, windows a, over a there. A glass door's fireproof. Right, sorry, we've just been chatting because Ollie interrupted and he was wrong basically. <laughs> We're not going to need a fire door on there because it's not, a, it's not blocking an escape route. So the fire doors, there's already going to be fire doors in this room anyway because this, as the kitchen, is a risk room. So there's going to be fire doors onto the um, bedroom and fire door onto the um, hallway. So that doesn't need a fire door because if it's going to travel anywhere, it's going to travel into here and this people have yeah, 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 got yeah, multiple yeah, places yeah. to escape. So anyway, um, lost my train of thought now. Um, I think that's everything in here. So let's show you upstairs. Um, new windows everywhere, they've all gone in. Yeah, new windows have gone in. In fact, you might, if this is open, actually, we can show you the drain lines down here. So, yeah, so there's a bathroom. There's two bathrooms, actually, here, upstairs. So you can see they've cut free for the soil stack there. And it's going to connect into this one here. That then runs down into here, which runs all the way to here. And like I said, there's another one there. And then there's one there. There's also another bathroom there, which is why that's there. I think that is going to be a little hose pipe. <laughs> oh yeah. So in fact we were here the other day with the plumber because he just had a few questions and um, one of the things that we had in that meeting was that obviously if we're blocking up that side of the house, as in there's going to be another house there on the other side, how are we going to get water to the back of the garden because there's, at the moment the water pipe is at the front. So obviously that's been put in after that discussion but also the plumbers were saying about how after the meeting they said oh wow we've barely got anything any work to redo because of the plans that we do and obviously they're really like they're really um specific and detailed everything they've done is obviously what i put on the plan so they came and said is this okay is this okay yep 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 um so yeah basically it just saves everyone times and they were really like oh you know barely got anything to redo because i think they're probably used to doing work and then clients change their mind or you know it wasn't quite explained properly and there's been a miscommunication so putting in the work and the time at the plan stage is really really crucial if you want to keep your your tradesmen happy and save work having to be done twice so anyway let's go upstairs and i'll show you the upstairs trying to part work let me just show this bedroom quick not much to show you Sorry, I jumped ahead a bit um, here. I forgot to explain about this room. Now, obviously, because we've come off of the kitchen, this the exit for this um, bedroom is straight into what's called a risk room um, kitchen. Um, so, obviously, fire safety standards mean that it needs to have a second exit point. So that's why this before was a um, what do you call it, a patio like sliding door thing. We've changed it to a window and a door combination. Um, so that they can have their own window and have, you know, in the summer they can have the windows open rather than have to leave a whole door open. But equally, it's got the um, door, so it ticks the fire, um, fire safety standards. Now, this is quite detailed, but um, this shows the detail we go to really. In one of our properties, we replaced, um, they already had a window door combination, so we just replaced it. And when we went to hang up the curtains, we realised that because this was so close, you get quite a lot of light coming through because you've got the the curtain length and the door length. So when we were designing this, I said to our team, um, this time we need to have quite a big gap between them so that I can have the curtains here can draw and sit on this bit and not interfere with either side and the same with this bit. So I'm hoping that this time round, 
that problem of having light escape won't be such a big problem basically um, so we will see how that goes but yeah that's that's the theory yeah that's what happens you know you you do something and you know you try and sort of think of everything that you can but sometimes things come up afterwards and you think oh okay let's not do that again and so this is then the result this is then the improved um <laughs> what was the word option i suppose so yeah now we'll go upstairs right i'm going to take you around anti-clockwise so we're going to start in this, this is probably the biggest room this one um which yeah, it's got its own ensuite. I mean, they've, to be honest, they've all got ensuites. I'm talking about. They've all got their own bathroom in this place. So we've got um, shower, basin, toilet, and then a really nice big open room. So I think this one's got two double wardrobes we managed to get in here. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be a really nice. Where we can, we try and put in desks because so many people work from home or have to take work home with them so having desks in is like a real plus it's in our market anyway here in Crawley um, so yeah I was in a bit I wasn't quite sure whether to keep this window um, because if you think about it from a this is a bedroom perspective and we're having to block out light actually the trying to find something here to block out light because we always get tenants moaning about you know being woken up, obviously, work, work, because we're near the airport, we have lots of sort of shift workers. So I'm still sort of wondering what, how to best sort that out. But you know, I'm sure we'll find a, a solution for that. And then the other room has been blocked up. So it's only this one I've got to um, actually sort of. Solve. It's nice to have extra light though, as well. So I think people mm -hmm. like natural light, so that's why we kept it in the end. And also, obviously, there's a cost implication of blocking it up. So um, yeah, we kept it in the end. But watch this space. Bedroom. Um, again, this had so they, all these all the rooms here had built-in cupboards. So obviously, that's naturally somewhere where we think about maybe replacing with an ensuite if the plumbing allows. So here, if you can see the line there, and that's where the the wardrobe actually came to. So we've only taken a bit more. And this shower here, this is actually we I've had to actually change the. So we've, we normally have a minimum of 800 um, shower tray width or whatever. I had to go to 760 just because those four centimetres really do make a difference. It enables that I can get the shower, the basin and the toilet in um, and, a, and a towel rail. Can we stop fiddling around with the... Sorry, there's like three wasps in there. I've got rid of two. <laughs> and there's a third. There you go. Yeah, it's loads of holes anyway, yeah, but... Oh, there's so, another one, look, it's a fourth one. So unprofessional. <laughs> I'm gonna get a different camera, man, next time. Wait, 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 wait. Just get rid of them. There we go. Oh, look, that's my in, hands. In a hail of dust. Oh. There you are. They've laminated them and they're all sides. I'm not sure if you can see them. They're, they're not actually the plumbers and electrics plans, they're just the stud work plans. Oh, I just didn't know that. Mm. Anyway, should we move on? Leave David, David Attenborough to make sure. This is then another nice big bedroom, and as you can see as well, we've used what was the cupboard, the built in cupboard, and just brought it out a little bit um, to make an ensuite room here. So, again, shower, basin, and toilet. Um, and then the same as before, there's so not much else really to say other than it's going to be obviously. Lots of space to put in plenty of furniture here and um, make it a really nice bright room really. And then this one, so this I've left because the plumber said to me that you might need to put in an accumulator. Um, so we need to leave somewhere so that if, if the water pressure isn't right or something like that, I think I'm getting this right, if it's not right then he will put the accumulator in here at a later date. So this was going to be a nothing cupboard anyway um, and so we're just leaving it for that purpose. If they don't need it then we'll just add um, shelves and they can have it as storage. So this was the family bathroom. Now I did think about putting the door to this bedroom here and then obviously it's then an ensuite like all the other rooms. However, in all of our properties we always try and keep one room as an off suite 
bathroom so that in the, in the event that anyone's bathroom fails, you know, there's a problem, shower's blocked or they can't use X, Y, Z, um, there's one that everyone can access. So it obviously is solely for this person's use unless there's an emergency and, and other tenants have to use it. So in here, I don't care not to fall through the floor because there's holes. Um, so in here, we are having toilet over here and basin over here. And as you see before, there was a bath here and obviously the slant of the bath goes over the slant of the stairs. We don't really like baths in our HMOs. Tenants tend to prefer showers. So trying to put in a shower and not lose this space, we've come up with the idea of making this a stud wall here. And then what will happen is in here, we're gonna, this is in the wrong place, but there'll be a recessed shelving unit here, or not shelving unit, just a shelf, so that in here they can put, you know, shampoo, shower gel, all that kind of stuff. So there's already storage, you know, shelving in this shower. And then on this side, we're gonna have like pockets here, and they can put, again, any of their toiletries or towels, or anything, so there's storage built in. So although we, obviously we still are losing quite a lot of space here, we're still trying to make the best use of it. Now, one thing I've forgotten to say is where possible in, in the HMOs that we're doing nowadays, where possible, we're trying to have walk-in showers. And the reason for that is we did one in um, one of our properties, Green Acres. If, if you've seen the vlog, you'll have seen it. Um, but what the thing is with the walk-in shower, you've got no moving parts. And so therefore it's easy to maintain and clean and it has less buildup of, you know, mold and whatever. So where possible, we bring that in. And here, we're gonna put one, um, a walk-in shower here. So yeah, it's just a glass panel, walk-in, easy peasy, really. Um, so that is the bathroom, the family bathroom, what it's gonna be turned into, which is obviously for this final bedroom, which again, is a good size, although this, this probably caused me the biggest headache in this bedroom, just because the, the width of it like this, to try, I, I couldn't get the bed in easily, a bit echoey in here, but couldn't get the bed in easily and, and the, the width of it is about 10 or 20 centimetres too small to be able to get a bed with a, a chest of drawer unit and then actually be able to walk through the walkway. So we come up with quite a cool solution which I'll show, I'll show you obviously when it's in and I'll come back to this and say this. Um, but yeah, as you can see, so because we're on this side of the property and hopefully that's going to have um, an extra house added to it, that that window, like I said from the other one, that's been blocked up. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything covered here. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else to add? Um, no. No? Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, tune into our next vlog so you can see the next update. And thank you very much and we'll see you soon. Bye.